This is Twit. This episode of Tech Break is brought to you by our friends at IT Pro TV, now called ACI Learning. 94% of CIOs and CISOs agree that attracting and retaining talent is increasingly critical. Invest in your workforce and keep their IT skills current with ACI Learning. Visit go.acilearning.com slash twit. Twit listeners can receive up to 65% off an IT Pro Enterprise Solution Plan after completing their form. Based on your team's size, you'll receive a properly quoted discount tailored to your needs. Mark Spoonauer from Tom's Guide was at the Made by Google event. You may have heard of it. We did live coverage of this event yesterday morning. I did that with uh, Wintwit Dow. And, uh, you know, they had a lot of hardware to announce, a lot of artificial intelligence news to announce. Of course, Mark was at the event, so he got the firsthand perspective and some hands-on time with the hardware. So let's talk to Mark. It's good to have you back, sir. Thanks for having me. Yeah, great to have you back. So are you back home at this point? Cause, or, or did you even need to travel in order to get to this event? They actually had the event in New York and our offices are, are based here. So it was over at Pier 57, which is really nice. Google, uh, I think they opened this building about a year ago and uh, the event space is uh, pretty impressive. Yeah, well, you know, it's interesting, the event space, because um, on the stream, like this was a, a comment that was uh, talked about a little bit yesterday on This Week in Google. Mm -hmm. The event was very like unassuming, almost a little kind of boring, a little kind of slow, <laughs> you know, slow news sort of thing. The event kind of looked small by comparison with some of the other companies that do these big things that capture your attention. Did you feel like, was there a certain energy in the room that we didn't capture on the live stream? No, I don't think you missed anything. <laughs> I, I do think that the... <laughs> The event was surprisingly small. Like when I sat down, I was in the second row and I was like, this is awesome because I like I'm front and center uh, for when Rick came on stage. And when they started showing the products, though, and making the announcements, I think you, you sort of forgot like how small the venue yeah. was and how many people were there and you focused more on the news. Absolutely. And that's what we should do right now. So you got to um, experience firsthand the hardware that Google talked about. Of course, I think the, you know, the, the, pre, the, the most important hardware that they talk about every year in their October event is usually their smartphone, their Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro is the new smartphone that they announced yesterday. Um, mm -hmm. And I mean, from a design perspective, I wouldn't say that it looks entirely different. They're really sticking to that kind of that camera bar uh, unique signature that their Pixel phones are now known for. What struck you in your time with the hardware? I know there's a temperature sensor on there. Like what, <laughs> what do you feel are like the important differentiators, the important reasons why people should pay attention to this versus the previous Pixels? I think you're right that the designs are almost like eerily similar with the exception of maybe the matte back on the pros, which I actually appreciate. And I think the new colors are nice, especially the blue model. I think when people have their choice of what like review units they want to get, I can almost guarantee you almost everyone went for the blue. But That's I think when you get I into for. the actual <laughs> when you get into the actual changes, I do think that, you know, AI has become like so much of a buzzword. It's it's overkill. But what they're talking about is like a, like we're making AI phones. They're really backing it up with the the types of features that are included. So what impressed me most like during some of the demos was the audio eraser so the magic audio eraser when you're recording video and you want to like sort of like just erase the background noise and they had this really compelling example of this guy who was playing violin and there was street noise behind him and you could use this slider to just like take the background noise away i was blown away with like how effective that was but obviously we have to test it for ourselves. like so one of the things that we want to try is like take it on a subway um, or like right on the platform as the train is arriving, like can can we actually get something similar if we try that? So I, I thought that was cool. And then best take when it comes to like taking photos, we've all had that problem where you're taking a group photo and not everyone looks great and you wish you could like take a face from this picture and like put it into the final product. Well, they're actually letting you do that. It's like during my hands-on time that when it's doing the processing in the background, it's not instant. It actually, you could tell that it's processing all the images that it took. But the, what it spits out is a, like a final result where everyone is smiling, hopefully, and facing the camera. And if you don't like the results, you can actually pick, like, choose the individual faces and tap on them on the screen. And I thought that was really cool. Wow, that's interesting. So that is, I mean, that was one of the 
easy to point at kind of key um, moments in in the event and you know, the hardware and what it's capable of doing now with the artificial intelligence and the Tensor G3 chip on device. Of course, the question that comes to mind for me and I'm sure everyone else is like, okay, it's neat that it does that. You know, right. how often does it give you a usable kind of final output? And were you able to play with it enough to kind of like test or test around with it a little bit? Or they probably gave you kind of demonstration images, I'm guessing. Sure. To do that. With it was all, it, it was all can, it was all canned examples, but you're right. Okay. Like when, when magic eraser first came out, which I thought was a compelling feature also, you know, I tried it on different things like, you know, trying to remove a car or something from, from the image and it was hit or miss. Like it would remove that, that, product or, or that object but what was yep. left was sometimes like messy looking so one of the things that they said yesterday is that hey we're working on this too and magic eraser is, is getting better so you're right you're not going to know how good it is until we actually review them but that's that's what we got to do did they give you any sort of story around the temperature sensor that's that that part sure. is a little confusing to me or a little curious. I mean, I mean, I think the easy thing to jump to is, all right, so, you know, COVID was just a couple of years ago and temper, you know, taking the temperature of people walking into a place was a really hot item, no pun intended, for a while. Um, and then, then it kind of suddenly became not that hot. And so, <laughs> like, is this a remnant of COVID era design? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like someone raised their hand in a two, like a 2020 meeting and this got on the drawing board and they just forgot to take it off. <laughs> but yeah, but I, yeah. I did, on the on the sur on the surface it seems like a little bit too gimmicky. Like it's definitely one of the like gimmicky features that I've seen in in a phone in a while. It almost seems like no no offense. It almost seems like Samsung esque in terms of like just just throw it on there and let's let's see what people use like how they use it. Some of the scenarios that they that they included was like measuring your you know your baby's milk before you give it to them, or if you're taking your dog for a walk, maybe you want to measure the pavement you know before you you, you know. But you can also just like use your hand. <laughs> so you know. So I I think. Uh, but to your point, they have they have submitted paperwork to the FDA to say uh, you know to potentially use this for body temperature scanning. And yeah. it could potentially be used for that. But even then, I think it's a, somewhat of a limited use case. So they're going to have to make a business case, I think, for this. But I don't think it's a it's not a coincidence. That they sort of just threw it in there and, and during the presentation, like it wasn't like they didn't spend a lot of time on it. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you know, it should be noted that the watch, uh, Pixel Watch 2, you know, also has a temperature sensor in there. I could kind of see some sort of like you know, some mm -hmm. sort of coordination between those two things in some way. I don't know what that way would be, but um, yeah, it really yeah. did kind of feel what, what it gave me um, uh, visions of was the Soli inclusion of the Soli radar on the Pixel 4, where it was like, mm -hmm. okay, we got this feature and we'll see how useful it is. <laughs> and, you know, I mean, the fact that it didn't make it into the Pixel 5 kind of tells you how useful it really was at the end of the day. And I, I wonder if we're going to see the same thing with that. Yeah, um, I'll be somewhat su surprised if it sticks around for Pixel 9. Yeah, me too. Me too. But I think what we have no um, possibility of escaping is the continued kind of integration of Google's efforts around AI, artificial intelligence into its products. And mm -hmm. I think it was really smart of Google to reinforce during the event something that I mean, we've been talking about on the network for a while, which is that when we're talking about, you know, AI is not a new thing, even though it feels like it's a now thing. It is modern AI is very much a now thing. But I mean, Google right. was doing assistant uh, back in 2016. I think that's when it launched. And that was kind of the one of the earlier times that I remember interacting with what I thought of as an AI assistant on my device. And it did really cool things, but there were also limits to what I could do. And I always wanted yeah. it to be able to do more. Now Google's announced, you know, assistant with barred integration. Um, what are your thoughts on that? I, I personally, I feel like that could be a really big, like a, a big step forward for Google's um, kind of the, the war of AI and dominance uh, for Google is put AI with Bard in the hands of uh, many millions of people who have Android smartphones eventually. Yeah, I think in a way it is putting the smart in smartphones. And that's what I said during my hands on that, like the Pixel 8 and the Pixel 8 Pro look like the smartest phones yet. And I think that's a compliment because they are finding ways to integrate AI in ways that make sense. And there was lots of like use cases that they gave yesterday. So for example, 
the recorder app can already like give you a transcription, which is amazing in and of itself in real time. But the fact that it can now like summarize what happened during that call or during that recording is pretty cool. It can also summarize like web pages that you're looking at. But I do I, I do agree that like Bard I think sort of takes it to the next level and Google Assistant working together. And they they gave like some like fun like example so for example like make a, a social caption for this dog and things like that so like i think in a way you're going to if it this works the way it should you might have to retrain people in how they think that they can interact with their smartphones because the possibilities are endless in terms of how they could work together so i think a lot of it is going to come down to discovery what what can i do yeah. or what can i what can't i do with bard and assistant working together I think the challenge with Assistant um, before, the real limiting factor for me is that um, it, while it promised to do a lot, you really did mm -hmm. need to know kind of the, the certain syntax in order to get it do, to do these things. And, you know, what companies have right. built in some sort of integration with it? How do you get there? How do you say the right thing in order to get that integration to kick into gear? And it seems mm -hmm. to me that BARD and large language models in general have just become so good at parsing language and un, and I put in air quotes, understanding what people intend when they say something that this could really <laughs> kind of take it to another level. I'm super excited to play around with it. Yeah. The other thing that I, I'm wondering aloud is how long is Google going to keep this an exclusive feature for Pixel phones? Because if it works yeah. the way it should, then I think it could be a huge advantage for Android in general. And it puts that much more pressure on Apple to do better with Siri and, you know, that they are working on th some things behind the scenes, but Apple doesn't even like to use the word or AI. They use like machine no, yeah. learning, and so so it, it'll be curious. I'll be curious to see like how they respond, especially with like the next WWDC, for example. Yeah, yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, Google's uh, approach on a lot of these things with its Pixel devices and some of those special features it is often release it on the Pixel. Get, you know, get pixel users using it, iron out the kinks, and then eventually mm -hmm. broaden that out because Google has a lot to gain from people integrate, you know, talking to and uh, feeding information into Bard. Of course, Google wants, I, I have to imagine Google definitely wants long term to have this in the hands of anyone that has an Android smartphone and what that means. So, um, that's the mm -hmm. Pixel 8 and the 8 Pro. I know we're kind of running out of time here, but real quick, you also got some hands on time with the Pixel Watch 2. What are your thoughts there? I mean, obviously the, de the design is very similar to the one. The sensor outlay is, uh, is impressive. I feel like they really did uh, some solid upgrades there. Yeah, I think the multi-path heart rate sensor definitely seems like an improvement. They say it's about 40% more accurate versus the previous version. They now include the the stress sensor, which they didn't have before. So it, it, they're definitely upping their game when it comes to health and fitness. The design is a little bit too similar, but it is lighter than before. I think the one thing that's missing is a larger size. So with the Galaxy Watch 6 and with the Apple Watch 9, for example, you can get larger sizes than the 41 millimeters. And we also complained last year about the fact that there was a, the, the bezel was a little bit too big around the screen, and they really haven't addressed that either. So they haven't necessarily answered our two biggest complaints, but they have made a lot of other improvements that we think could convince some people. In, in a way, I think it's like the ultimate Fitbit watch, which is what they wanted to do. And I think totally. they've accomplished that. They, they've doubled down on health and fitness, but I still think there's room for improvement. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll see about that. I know that the charging puck, you know, I saw an article no longer has the magnetic snap. It's now the pogo pins. I don't know. I kind of, I kind of yeah. feel like that's a little bit of a step backwards. I, I did like the, the magnetic snap versus the pogo pin approach, but I don't think that's a deal breaker mm -hmm. when you're talking about a, a smartwatch like no. this. It's really, yeah. And the battery life has improved, right? So last year they said 24 yeah. hours, but but it's actually, you're getting 24 hours now with the always on display. So I think incremental right. upgrades, but I think they're definitely in the game when it comes to smartwatches. Yeah, yeah. And Scooter X in the IRC is actually pointing out the pins instead of the wireless allows for a faster charge. So at the end of the day, mm -hmm. is that what you want? You know, do you want a faster charge coupled with your longer battery life? That's probably more important than the cool factor of it snapping in magnetically to a puck. Uh, but why can't we have it all? That's my question. Uh, <laughs> Mark Spoonhauer, thank you so much for hopping on and sharing some of your initial thoughts. I know you couldn't show off the hardware. I'd love to see it, but I know that, that we can't take a look at it right now. I have to imagine you're working on a review, something coming down the, the pipeline, winking people. Well, they should probably just stay tuned, I imagine, right? 
Yeah, um, it'll be soon that we can give you our final <laughs> rating and re and review. But one of the big questions that people have is like, what's the difference between the Pixel 8 and Pixel 8 Pro? We have a story on that. So that if you are interested in pre-ordering, we can help you figure that out. Perfect. And pre-order you should if you want to get these phones, because when you do that uh, soon enough, like right now, go and do that. You will get um, either a free Pixel Watch 2 or the Pixel Buds um, update that we didn't even talk about um, as a throw in bonus. So that's something to keep an eye on. Mark Spoonauer writing for Tomsguide.com. Mark, thank you for carving out time for us today. It was great talking with you. Thanks. And it was great to see you again. All right. We'll talk to you soon.